good afternoon. If you're here, chances are it's because you are frustrated with your own or with your child's homework. Don't worry, we're going to get this down. When my own son, who is now a high school junior, was a fourth grade AIG student, I looked at these bars and said, you have got to be kidding. I had no clue what to do with them. But with some practice, I learned their value, and now I'm actually pretty good at them. So let's get you that way too. Today we're going to answer the questions, how do the different kind of bar models work? What kinds of questions best fit with each bar model? And Clark, have you lost your mind? Nah, I'll show you how this works. Okay, in general, Singapore math has a focus on parts and wholes. If you keep that in mind and keep looking for the part and the whole and how they fit together, this is a whole lot easier. Let's start with a really easy problem, one that you could actually go ahead and do the algorithm that you're used to um, with so that you know what the answer is and it will help everything fit together a little more easily. Daniel and Peter have 450 marbles. Daniel has 248 marbles. How many does Peter have? Well, I'm going to approach this the same way I would approach any problem, by looking at what numbers I have. So I see 450, and I see 248. Whoop, let's get that off of there. And then let's circle those numbers. So those are under control. And then the second step is to underline the actual question. And it looks like that is, how many does Peter have? So I know what I'm looking for now. I want to know how many marbles Peter, the one person, has. OK, so what are our action words? Well, I'm looking at Peter, because that's important, because I want to know what his are. And I'm looking at how many. So let me grab those real quick. So now that I've boxed my action words, I want to do a little analyzing. I need to ask myself, do I have holes? Do I have parts? Well, it looks to me like I have a hole. Daniel and Peter have 450 marbles together. So I've got the whole. The whole is 450. Daniel has 248 marbles. Well, that's a part. I know how many Daniel has all by himself. What I'm missing is the other part, how many Peter has. And I'm going to represent that visually with a bar, like that. In this case, a single bar for a single step problem. Well, the first thing I want to represent is the whole, because I have that. I'm going to do that using a bracket that goes across the whole bar to show it's the whole. So there we go. We've got our bracket that shows that the whole is 450. So the next thing I want to represent is the part that I already have, Daniel's 248 marbles. And I've divided the bar not quite in half, because 248 is probably slightly more than half of 450. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and label this, because until you're good at this, you really should label everything. So this is going to be Daniel's. And how much does Daniel have? He has 248. So let's put that right there. OK, so now we can look at this and say, oh, well, I have part of a whole. I have Daniel's part, but I don't have Peter's part. So I know if I were to look at this as an algebraic expression, it would be 248 plus P equals 450. So when we have a whole but need a part, we take our whole and subtract out the part that we already have, which will give us the part that we don't have. So I've gone ahead and done my math. There is my whole. There is Daniel's part. And this 202 here represents Peter's part. So we can drop that in on our bar, and we have our answer. Peter has 202 marbles. So there's a very basic problem done with the bar model. So let's set this up a little bit. We have Daniel has 248 marbles, and Peter has 202. Who has more marbles, and how many more? Well, as always, let's start with our numbers. We already knew that Daniel has 248 marbles, and that Peter has 202. And it's asking me two questions. Who has more marbles, and how many more? OK, so let's box some action words. Who has more? More is definitely an action word. And how many more? Let's just hit more again, along with many. OK. So this looks to me like a comparison problem, in which case I'm going to need two bars, one to represent the number of marbles that Daniel has, and one to represent the number of marbles that Peter has. So I'm going to do that right quick. So here I've made two bars, and one is slightly longer than the other. 
Why? Because one's going to represent 248 marbles and one's going to represent 202. So let me label these. Daniel has 248 marbles. So we're going to label that bar for him. So this is Daniel with his 248. And this is going to be Peter with his 202. Okay. So that's there all represented. So it doesn't take someone who's particularly good at math to look at 248 and 202 and realize pretty quickly that Daniel has more marbles. That's the easy part of the problem. The second part of the problem is how many more does he have? So that is going to represent here as a difference. I need to know the difference between 248 and 202, and this is going to be that right there. So there I'm showing my difference. 248 minus 202 gives me a difference of 46. And so there's our x. We're going to represent our 46 right there. Taken care of. So what if you're going to have to do a two-step problem? Well, you're going to need a double bar. Mary has 120 more beads than Jill, who has 68 beads. How many beads did Mary have, and how many do they have all together? Okay, let's start with our numbers. Well, we see she has a, Mary has 120 more beads than Jill, who has 68 beads. Okay, it's asking us two questions. How many beads does Mary have? And then, whoops, how many do they have all together? So I'm going to need to build two bars. Okay, I know that Mary has more because it says that. So there's one for Mary, and Jill has only 68, so we know that's going to be a fairly big difference. Let's go ahead and lay that there. Okay, where are our action words? Well, I see more, and I see how many, and I see all together. So I'm going to take a quick second and get those boxed. Okay, now that I've very sloppily circled and boxed everything I needed to, it's time to do some analyzing. I know that Mary has 120 more beads than Jill, so this is going to be Mary's, because she has more. And this is going to be Jill's, because she has fewer. Okay, we know that Jill has 68 beads. Let's go ahead and represent that right there. Okay. We know that this is going to be 120. Why? Because this, see how this is longer? This is going to be the more part. So let's make a bracket there to show that that is 120 more. Wow, that's terrible. Let's try that again. Although I'm going to tell you, this is not easy as it looks. OK, at least now it says 120. So, to find out how many Mary has all together, I need to take the 68 that Jill has and add that to the 120 that she has that is more. So let's do that real quick. So when I add the 68 that I know that Jill has to the 120 more that Mary has, we find out that Mary has 188. And we're going to represent that by placing that on her bar. And then we're ready to attack the second part of the problem, which is how many do they have all together? Well, I'm going to use another bracket over here to show that I want to know the all together. There it is. So if I want to know how many they have all together, I have to take how many Mary has, add it to how many Jill has, and that will give me the all together. And if you check my math, you will see that all together they have 256. So we're going to represent that right there. Not so bad, right? Makes sense once you know what the parts do. Now, if you're multiplying or dividing, it is going to look a little bit different. We have a grocer who has 42 apples. Two-sevenths of them are green, and the rest are red. So how many apples are red? Well, it really is a one-step problem. So I'm just going to need one bar to represent the 42 apples. There we go. Now, since I'm working with a fraction with a denominator of 7, I'm going to divide this into seven as equal parts as I possibly can. And there we are. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. Now let's take a look at our problem. A grocer has 42 apples. Okay, that's an important number. And two-sevenths of them are green. 
and the rest are red. I'm actually going to treat rest like it's a number. Okay. Question is, how many apples are red? Okay, well, it sounds like we have a hole here at 42. And we know that two-sevenths of them are green. And I want to know how many, let's box that, are red. Okay. So we know the hole is 42. That means a bracket right there that shows that the hole is 42. Now I need to represent the two-sevenths of them are green. All right, well, we change up. I've got my green. If you were using just a regular pencil, you could just put G in there for green. But there we go. Okay, so I know the two-sevenths of them are green. And I want to know how many are red. Well, red would be represented by the little blocks that are left. So, I need to know how much each unit is worth. See, I have seven units. And I know the whole is 42. So if I want to find what the value of each unit is, I need to take my whole and divide it by the number of units or the number of boxes that are there. And you should know, because you are in the fourth grade at least, that 42 divided by 7 is 6. And that means that each of these boxes has a value of 6 apples. And I want to represent that by writing a 6 in each one of these. Just like that. And now finding my answer is as simple as counting by 6's. 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30. 30 of the apples are red, 12 of them are green. Together that makes 42. So how many apples are red? 30 of them. We're going to solve a more complicated problem. It says, Lauren spent 20% of her money on a dress. She spent two-fifths of the remainder on a book and had $72 left. How much money did she have at first? Well, let's do the traditional. She spent 20% of her money, which can be looked at as two-tenths. She spent two-fifths of the remainder. I'm going to treat the remainder like it's a number, because it will be eventually and had $72 left. And the question asks, how much money did she have at first? So we're going to have to work backwards. I also see where she had two transactions. She had she um, bought a dress and then she bought a book. So with two transactions, I think we're going to need two bars. And there are my two bars. The longer one is, of course, for when she had more money at the beginning, and the shorter one is for when she had done some spending. So if I look at my numbers, I'm dealing with 20% and 2 fifths. Well, 20% would be 2 tenths. And I don't want to work with tenths and fifths. I want to keep those denominators consistent. So how much is 2 tenths in fifths? Well, it's 1 fifth. So she spent 1 fifth of her money on a dress. She spent 2 fifths of what was left on a book. So let me represent that. So what I've done here is broken the first bar into fifths. And this shows that 1 fifth was spent and 4 fifths is left. You see how this matches up to the 4 fifths that's left? But then we're going to take the 4 fifths that's left and divide that into fifths again because she spent 2 fifths of the remainder. This is the remainder on a book and had $72 left. So if two-fifths was spent and $72 was left, that means that this three-fifths represents $72. Let me represent that like that. 72 is left and this two-fifths is gone. So I need to know the value of each of these units. And to do that, I'll need to take 72 and divide it by three. And that'll give me the value of each. And you can check my math there quickly and you can see that each of those blocks has a value of $24 and I need to represent that by writing that in each. And there we are. Each is worth $24. So I can see very quickly that 24 plus 24 is 48 and in order to get the value of the entire bar I'm going to add 72 to the 48. And again take a second to check my math and you'll see that the value of the bottom bar is $120. Well, that means that four-fifths of the money that she had was $120. Let's represent that real quick. 
And there we go. The value of one, two, three, four of these blocks is $120. To find the value of each of the blocks, each of the units, I need to take 120 and divide it by 4. Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so 120 divided by 4 is 30. And the value of each of these is $30. There we go. And now that I know the value of each unit, I just got to count units. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. So how much money did she have at first? She had $150 when she started. And that's how the big ones get done. So, today we've answered the question, how do the different kinds of bar models work? Well, for a single step problem, you usually just need a single bar. When we're comparing, you're going to need at least two bars, and sometimes more depending on how many numbers you're comparing. On multi-step problems, you're going to need multi-bars. But if you look at the numbers and ask yourself which are the parts, which are the holes, it helps you figure out what that number of bars will be. What kinds of questions fit best with each bar model? Well, division multiplication ones are cut into units. Addition subtraction ones show parts and holes. Clark, have you lost your mind? I don't think so. It takes some time. It takes some practice. But doing the last problem we did without a bar model would have been very difficult for me because I don't hold numbers in my head well. Um, so that is a way that really it works for me. So hopefully it will start to work for you. Go ahead back to what you were doing, and I will see you about it tomorrow. Have a good evening.